Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day. Uh, my name is Brian here, and I'm here. Yes. Free Salon Education Live. Uh, I'm here with Matt Beck, and today we're going to be doing something that I feel like we've been leaving out in the conversation for quite some time. The money piece has been a really hot topic for a minute, but what about people with bangs? So I uh, have been practicing this a little bit in the salon without asking permission because I wanted to make sure that I had something to present for you guys. So I've been playing around with people's fringe, their bangs, and trying to find a way that made me feel comfortable saying that it's related to the money piece. It is going to be a series of, just like we I was doing with the money piece back when it was long, there is going to be foils and... Um, balayage together because I just think they work really well in, as far as creating that it, it gives it that look of this isn't the first time the hair has been light because you have immediate dimension between what the foils can give and what balayage is going to give so I think that they just form a really nice partnership especially in a look like this this is also not a cookie cutter technique that this works on everybody. This is very customized to what you are working with. So I came into this haircut. There was a lot of really cool PCness around the bangs. So I incorporated that because I didn't want it to just be like a block color chunk of white bangs with the rest of the hair being dark. There was a not really a ton of dimension in this hair to begin with. So you'll see as I did this heavy money piece in the fringe, I did just throw a tiny bit of dimension using balayage through the rest of the hair. I will do the same with uh, our upcoming noodles that we're gonna work on. All right, so this is what we're working on. It's not the exact same haircut because that's reality. How often is what you're going to learn in class going to be every single haircut that comes into the salon? So for starters, we're gonna pick out what it is that we want, where we want the focus of all this energy to be. So I'm not going, this isn't going to be a class of doing this entire head. We've got plenty of those and there will be plenty more. But I am gonna look and see like what could be a really cool, fun area to give some of this uh, excitement too. Because we are gonna be going in with a much stronger technique, I don't wanna have it all be on the side where the direction of the bangs go. I wanna bring some in over here. I do the same thing when I cut a side bang. I always say I like to have a little related piece over here because it just helps to balance everything out a little bit. But when I bring this back and then you look at this if that's what we're lightening, I think that'll look really cool. I think that'll look nice when the hair gets pulled back. It'll look nice when the hair is down. And it'll give that idea of what the money piece is all about. Like it's giving the brightness around the face and letting the rest of the hair just live how it lives. So I'm doing, for my blonding choices, I'm going with Synchro Lift for my foils because I want nice, bright, clean, even lift. And then Skylights for my balayage because, yeah, I'll chase the camera. I know how to search for attention. Um, yeah, I like skylights because it's just a fantastic consistency to work with. And I don't know, there's just something about trying to stay in the same family of product that just makes me feel like I'm gonna get a more, I don't know, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the end result is just gonna go together nicer by keeping things related. That might just be all in my head. I don't know. I'm not gonna challenge it, so don't ask me to. Because I'm working with a mannequin, I am gonna do 40 volume for both of these because I discovered a couple weeks ago. While we use 20 in everybody's foils on real people, I forgot. That is not the best idea when you're working on a mannequin because 20 very rarely breaks through as much as you want it to. So, homegirl's getting 40 on both.
Okay, so I'm only going to be using my foils through the actual fringe. The cool long pieces here, my little tendrils. That's just gonna be balayage because I want that to be like a softer transition into the hair. Because like I said, I'm not gonna go real hard with any highlighting back here. So this is gonna sort of be like that brackish water. Take it back to marine biology. I guess that would be earth science more than marine biology. Whatever. Where salt water and fresh water come together, brackish water, this is the brackish water of the hair color. Because we're gonna go pretty hard in here, not so hard back here. So this, our balayage tendrils are gonna be what helps that make sense. Thanks for that fun fact. Hey, you know what? You're welcome. Everyone's a little bit smarter. Cause I feel like, I don't know why, but that's just something that stuck with me ever since high school. And I reference it a lot. And I don't know that everyone else remembered it as well as I did. So now I at least know these guys know. <laughs> All right. So in checking this out, this is going to be what we're foiling. I discovered a fun little cool technique to make this pop and have it be not just like typical foils like bricklay through there because that'll look a little funny in the, the root section because there is going to be that shadow at the root because we are foiling and we're not doing slices. So what I think it was kind of a cool little uh, difference on doing it is they found a point in the shortest point of the bangs where they start. And then I just had that be sort of a pivot point for all of my foils because it just also creates a fun little sweeping, uh, sweeping look while still giving me my highest concentration of blonde in a corner like money pieces like to be. So pick your comb based on how bold you want these highlights to be. I am gonna do something a little, because the hair is so dark and it is a longer look, I think I'm gonna go with the middle highlighty one. Because yesterday on my client who's got super fine hair, who I've actually referenced in my classes many times, because anytime someone asks me, what about someone with fine hair? I always think about her, because she's the finest hair of everyone I have and the blondest. And yesterday I did this on her. She has more of a, like, what I consider curtain fringe and find out I was wrong. Um, the straight across. And she wanted like blonde, like hard blonde. And I did the baby lights back to back all the way through and it's fantastic, but it works really well on the fine hair. I feel like it might just get lost in the, the thicker, darker hair. So I am gonna go in with something a little more aggressive. My angle okay on everything. That's what she said. Now that it's intimate and it's just us, I can tell you guys I'm not blowing smoke. I really do love this table. The amount of crap that I have on this table right now and the fact that it is completely organized and nothing is touching anything makes me very happy. Like I'm one of those people at the holidays with a big plate of food where my food doesn't really touch because I don't particularly love that. So when I work, it's the same thing. And I have almost an entire color bar. All right, back to focus. So what I'm saying about your little pivoting point there where you're gonna do your foils from, I'm gonna start at the same spot, but now it's gonna be like a little cheese wedge, slice of pizza, trivial pursuit, whatever triangle shape thing is gonna make that sit in your brain best. So I've got the point down here. See what I'm saying? Picking up the shape. Got it. Cool. And then I'm gonna take my slice from that that I then leave. 
And we are gonna go in and balayage the ends of these just like we do when it's a longer money piece. So don't worry about it being like, ah, Brian, that's so dark in between. Don't worry, we will address that. The foils in as close as you want them or as close as you're capable. Because there's going to be a bunch of moving, I mean, I lock my foils in anyway. It's just something that I've always done, so it's something I'm always gonna do. But I know that it's not something everybody does, but this is one of those scenarios where you're gonna wanna lock them in because we're gonna be moving them a whole bunch. It's gonna be up and down, and I wanna bleach in between and do all this other stuff. So it just helps to have it in there good and tight so that while you're moving it around, it's not gonna slide. Because this is an area, like this is one of those things that's a super, super important area to make sure that you execute really nicely and cleanly. Because this is the part of their hair they're going to focus the most on. Because this isn't even like when someone gets a bob and up front is important. This is someone with bangs. Like, they're going to be fixing this part of their hair every single day. So you wanna make sure that it looks good and that it looks nice and neat and there's no like, oh God, I have to talk them into liking this kind of moments. And foils slipping is a really fast track to getting a, a whoops that you gotta hide or fix. I guess you could just fix your mistakes and not just lie about them. Yeah, that's what an a, option. What a novel idea. <laughs> so again, I'm just pivoting out. Does that make sense to you guys the way it makes sense to me? Matt, you can be one of the guys I'm referencing. Pivoting? Part? Yeah. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Sweet. It's smart. I'm a smart guy. My name's not just hair. Also here. Brain. Brain here. I screw up my name on the first outing. Yep. Jackass. All right. So one thing that I will point out, because we're doing this pivoting, you got to notice that we are starting to get up towards where this would be a really standout foil. Cause I mean, we took that triangle section. If I keep going, then you're gonna have one foil that just lays over that. And that's fine if that's the look you're going for. I don't think that's the look I'm going for. So I think what I'm gonna do, just because I think I am gonna switch to the baby light for this one because a highlight like that is gonna sit and you're gonna see stripe, 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 which is, again, fine if that's what you're going for. And I get to do what I want. My class. So I'm switching to this one. Because the way this reads is it reads much softer, but also it's a foil, so it's gonna, it's gonna stand out, it's gonna be there. Not how that was supposed to go. Try again. There she goes. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Matt just paid that guy so much money to step in here and talk about how great his haircut is in front of you. <laughs> They didn't even hear it. They heard me. You guys didn't hear? Oh, well, Matt just got... Oh, you could hear? Oh, these mics. Okay, so just real quick, so that you know what's going on, and then I want to chit chat more. Um, I'm just going in between my foils. Unlike when the hair is super long and you can just kind of grab all of it, 
I do have to go in between because it is smaller. The, the hair is smaller, also known as shorter. Um, actually going individually each time and grabbing the little sections that I left out to make sure that nothing gets left behind because I do want the ends of all of the, the fringe to be lighter. So I am holding it the direction that it is cut to go so that the flow that you're creating with the color is actually going with the flow of the cut of the fringe. Okay, that's all I had to throw in there. This is why I needed the paddle because I was like, oh, maybe I can do it without. No, not this one. Sometimes I can, but this time I actually need to use the paddle to hold the bangs for me so that I can create the actual look I want. I want to. And yesterday was a big makeover day, but I was like trying to haul butt to get out of here because I volunteer at a local high school to do their hair for their theater department. And the show opens this week and I forgot that I was supposed to do that this week. So I was like, okay, I'll come after work. So I had to like get out when I finished Marcy's hair yesterday. But it does look really cool. I bet. Because we cut her hair into like a really cute little bob. And because she likes to get so light, we just like, I went hard. We lightened the daylights out of her and then toned her with like some really cool silvery ashy tones so that her straight across bangs with this technique look like a really cool, it almost comes off like a color blocking technique because I went so much heavier in the fringe than I did everywhere else. So it's like color blocking, but with the consistency that you can get from foils. Best of both worlds. Oh my God. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. I just actually made someone's hair green yesterday. Intentionally. Good job. Was it Billie Eilish? No, I personally have a Oh. should be like I <laughs> anytime I have to color correct any fantasy color I'm just like all right here we go let's take all that knowledge that we have and hope it works because you know sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't wow Jess that's no joke let me say Good job before Actually, old, old Brian. <laughs> oh stop so before before Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, got right out of there. Hot. Good job. All right. So now we're going to be playing with the stuff that's outside. And this is where it's just going to be your artistic choices. We've got... This is the technical part that I wanted to show you. And now out here is going to be what will make this go. So I think... Hitting some really good balayage on the angle here will be nice. And then hitting it real good off on this side will make it work really nice as well. So, all right. So I'm gonna work again in pie shape sections just because this hair, we're gonna say it's gonna live down most of the time because these are the cute tenderly things that even when someone pulls their hair back, they do want hanging out. So since it's gonna live down, I'm gonna color it down because that's how balayage works. Depending on how much light you want and where you want the light to be, take all that into account, obviously. But I'm gonna come up top, give it a nice soft fade in with a much 
thicker, firmer consistency through the end to get a nice light blonde. Well, I love that. I gotta say, I really do miss teaching and being able to like talk to people while I do it. Yeah, it's nice, right? This is nice. So again, one section, two, and then three. So I'm gonna do a similar thing, just like any other time. Usually I reference this when you're at the high point in the back of the head. But keep in mind, I got a lot of highlights coming from one spot right here. So just think about that visually, like what you want that to look like. Because I've got now two highlights coming from this spot. Do I want to have all of them like coming hard from there and then that's that cool spotlight? Think about it, think about it. Yeah, I do. Because we talked about it, so that's what it's gonna be. So keep the hair nice and straight makes for a cleaner application and get in there let's make this the star of the show she didn't get bangs because she didn't want attention let's make it do something lay that down and then get this last piece So now when you look at this, we've got, it looks very dramatic because it's the paint, but if you've worked with balayage, you understand how much softer that's gonna come out at the end, but it is gonna give me a nice little statement piece on the softer side of the fringe. Cause when you look at this straight on and you think like, okay, that's gonna be really bright bold bangs something over here for a little bit of fun for everyone to enjoy. And then I'm gonna pop back over here to do my brackish water. And then you're done. It's all that working out, your chest is like, yeah, I'm all, and you're not used I'm to it. All, I'm not used to <laughs> such large pecs. You have to excuse me, my, my new muscles. I am bumping into things because I'm starting to get a wider butt than I've ever had. So that's fun. You're welcome, viewers. I'm sure that one's gonna make the final cut of the class. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> to be a fly on the wall when Matt has to edit a video that I was filming. I like to think that it's entertaining for him. I'm I do it on silent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I'm just rolling this around to make sure that I get maximum saturation with this piece because it is just balayage compared to the much stronger foils, so I'm not worried about this overpowering at all. So then from here, let's say you've done this to your guest, just decide what else you want to do to the rest of the head, if anything. All right, she's done. 